Hello everyone, good afternoon and welcome to the Ensemble online training webinar series. Uh, my name is Ben Moore and I'm one of the um, members of the Ensemble outreach team um, and I'm here to deliver the last webinar in our series. So as you can see, um, Emily, Denise and Helen have all done um, a really good job in covering all of the different data types um, and some of the tools that we have in Ensemble. Um, through the through the last few weeks, the last six webinars have all covered all the different types of data um, and um, some of the tools such as the BEP and Biomart. Um, and I get to give the last webinar, which is quite nice, um, because it's a, a really nice way to um, encapsulate all of the um, different types of data um, that um, Emily, Helen, and Denise have covered, um, and and try and show you the different ways that you can um, access this data um, other than just through the web browser. And in this way, the objectives of this webinar um, are very similar um, to, um, to, the, to the objectives for the previous webinars in that I'm going to show you um, the types of data that you can get in Ensemble, um, but also then the different ways that you can access this data um, rather than just using the web browser. Um, and most importantly, when thinking about um, the advanced access, I'm also going to show you um, where to go for help and documentation um, because we do have um, a lot of um, Informa information um, in the web browser that you can use um, when using advanced access um, of the ensemble. So um, we do have a similar structure um, to the webinar that we um, have had before, um, but there's obviously going to be quite a lot of um, different demonstrations at different points during the presentation, um, just because we have lots of different um, types of access um, that I'm going to try and show you um, little bits of all the way through the through the webinar. Um, and as always, um, Helen, Emily and Denise are here um, in the room with me today to answer any, answer any questions that you have. Um, and you can, you, you can ask some questions using the chat box um, in the um, webinar interface. Um, there's no threading, um, I'm sure you might have seen this before, so um, we've tried to instigate a policy of um, having a, an app username when you ask your question and then um, Helen, Emily and Denise can directly address you um, to get to the bottom of your question. Uh, and if there are any outstanding questions at the end, um, then I'm going to try and um, address those before um, we finish up. Uh, and the first thing um, that I'm going to ask you to do is to um, actually answer some poll questions. So these polls that you have had um, in um, previous webinars, and it's just aimed to see um, whether you um, have enjoyed the, the webinars um, and what you've been getting out of them. So the first poll um, is whether you've attended any of the previous webinars, so I'm going to launch that now. So most of you have now voted. Um, it shows us that, in fact, a, a large proportion of you have seen all of the previous webinars, um, or at least most of them. Um, there are a couple of people perhaps that haven't seen any of the previous webinars, so welcome to you, and um, we hope that you can um, perhaps view some of the older webinars if um, online in the YouTube channel and, and on the Train Online series um, if, if any of that is um, interesting to you. Um, and the second poll is um, the second poll is asking you if you if if you've done any of the previous exercises. So I'm going to launch this poll as well now. So again, most of you have voted, um, and it's very similar to what we've seen before. Um, there's most of you, or a large proportion of you, who haven't done any of the exercises, so um, we do think it's quite a good way to um, follow up on what we go through in each of the webinars and see if you can practice using Ensemble. Um, obviously, some of the best ways to um, learn is by practice, um, and some of the questions that we're actually going to have um, linked to this webinar um, try and cover um, all of the different um, aspects of Ensemble that um, we've covered throughout the webinar series. So um, if you haven't done any of them, then I might even suggest um, looking at the, the last ones because it will try and cover um, a broad range of Ensemble topics. So thank you for filling out those polls. I'm going to close that now. And I'm going to get back uh, into the presentation for today. So as I said, we have the exercises um, that should be launched um, during this webinar um, on the Train Online 
um, pages through the um, through the EBI um, website. And if you do have any questions um, relating to the exercises um, or that you think of after um, the webinar, then you can um, contact us um, by e emailing us um, on the help desk. Um, so you can email helpdesk at ensemble.org with any questions. Um, but you can also um, join the Facebook group for the online training series um, and ask any questions about the exercises um, to both us and, and also the other members um, of the um, Facebook group who have joined. So I'm going to start by talking a little bit about um, uploading your own data um, to the um, Ensemble browser for you to view um, alongside all of the other data that's already um, incorporated um, in our annotation. So you can view your own data in Ensemble, um, and Ensemble supports a variety um, of, um, of file types, so um, I'm not going to go through what each of these file types are, um, but there is information um, about the file types and the formats that they come in, and what's supported by Ensemble um, in the help and documentation section, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, but the, the basic idea is that you can upload files that you've generated um, perhaps during your own experiments, um, or if maybe um, you have from um, publications or you've um, shared with a, a collaborator. Um, and you can upload them um, in the um, web interface and view them um, alongside all of the other ensemble data. So we're going to get straight into um, a demonstration. Um, we're going to map large-scale deletions um, from patients that have microcephaly and developmental delay. Um, and these are um, three um, deletions that have been identified um, on, on, on chromosome 5. So the bed um, file format is one of the formats that's supported in Ensemble. Um, and in its most basic form, it consists um, of the chromosome number, um, and then a start and an end coordinate, um, se all separated by a space. And in this case, we've also um, arbitrarily added on um, a label for each of the three um, deletions. So I'm going to enter um, into the Ensemble Genome Browser now. And there are many ways that you can upload um, your data to, on, to, um, to view in Ensemble. One of the quickest ways um, is actually from the home page, so you can click on um, use my own data in Ensemble, the link um, in, on the home page. And this will bring you um, to another information page. Um, and it tells you a little bit about how um, you can upload data. Um, there's, in fact, even um, a, um, a video already describing um, how to upload your own data. Um, quite importantly, there's also links um, to show you all of the different file types that are supported in Ensemble, and, and it gives you some, um, some examples of, of how the data is formatted um, that you would need to obviously adhere to to be able to upload your data to Ensemble. So to add your data, um, you simply click the link below that says Add Your Data. And you should get this pop-up um, box. Um, and at the moment, you can see um, at the, I have no data, so um, underneath your data, I have no custom data already added to Ensemble. Um, but I do have options to add a custom track, so that's what I'm going to do now. So the first thing to do um, is to give a name to our um, track. Um, I'm just going to call this um, webinar example. And you have to select the species of interest. So um, we have um, deletions that have been taken from the human um, uh, from the human chromosome assembly, uh, genome assembly, sorry. Um, and then we can um, add our data. So we can either paste our data directly um, into, the, into the text box, or we can um, paste in a URL that is directed towards the data that we're interested in. So because we just have a small amount of data, um, we just have three, um, three, three deletions that are in, in the bed format, um, then we can, play, we can paste this data um, into the text box, which I've done there. You can also choose um, to upload a file um, by clicking on Choose File. You can, inst instead of pasting um, your data or, or pasting a URL, you can actually upload a file. Um, and that's another way that you can 
um, attach your data to um, to this view. Um, and sometimes, um, if you paste a URL that, for example, has a .bam um, uh, appendix, and then Ensemble will automatically detect um, the file type that you have. Um, but since we've just pasted in the data here, um, we need to select the data type that we have, the data format, um, and we have bed format, so we're going to click bed. Importantly, um, you can also get help um, on the supported formats here, so if you're not sure whether the data that you have is in the correct format, you can click on this link uh, and it will bring up um, a help page um, that has um, lots of information um, about all of the different file types that are supported. For example, if you scroll further down, you can see um, that you the different formats that are supported and you can even get links um, to each of these formats. So I'm going to close this window. Once we've filled out this pop-up box with all of the um, information that we need, um, we simply click Add Data. Uh, and if our data is in the right format and, and everything works um, as, as hoped, um, then we should get a message saying that our file has been uploaded successfully. Um, and it will have an option um, to jump us to the nearest region um, that contains custom data. So we're going to click on this link. So this brings us to um, a region in detail view, um, which I'm sure you're going to have um, remembered from all of the different webinars. Um, and our data has been added as a track um, in the region in detail view um, at the bottom of the page. So you can see here um, all of the other um, all of the other tracks remain um, that are already present by default. Uh, but we also have a webinar example track. So this was the name that I gave. Um, to the file that to the, the the file that I wanted to add, and you can see here um, these are the bed um, these are the regions of deletion that we um, that we described in our bed file. So you can see here P2, P1, and P3. Uh, if we zoom out using the zoom feature, then you can begin to see. Um, the uh, the margins of these deletions. So um, you can see here you can see here again P2, P1, and P3 all together. And if you move the tracks um, in relation to each other, you can move webinar example further down. And you can in fact see that P2, P1, and P3 um, all occur in a region that's um, proximal to this NIP. BL um, gene. So obviously this is something that's in, important when adding your custom tracks. You can obviously you can see um, your data in relation to the other ensemble annotations, um, which is going to give you um, quite a lot of information um, about your experimental data that you've added. So if you um, want to um, further customize the data that you have, or perhaps even add more, you can use this blue button to the side of your screen. Um, underneath the configure this page option, which we've used a lot in the webinar series, there's a manage your data button. Um, if you're in a region in detail view and you haven't already added any data to Ensemble, um, then this will say add your data. Uh, and if, if you click this, this will simply um, bring up the pop-up box that we saw before and you can add your data um, as we did before. So by clicking on manage your data, you can see um, this is the data that I already have um, called webinar example. Um, and we can choose to share this data um, using the links um, on, this, on the right-hand side. Uh, and we can also delete um, this data from, um, from our account. Um, and we can even add more tracks um, and choose to view one or multiple um, custom tracks all in one go. So I'm going to um, close this window. So that brings me to the end of the first demonstration. Um, that's... Um, how you upload your custom data to Ensemble. I'm now going to go back to the presentation and we're going to look more at the advanced um, access data, uh, advanced data access for Ensemble. So when we think about advanced data access, um, we think of accessing data um, in different scales. So mainly um, in the webinars um, up till now, we've been using um, the, the main website. Um, 
and this is generally um, a very small scale way to access data. You can only really access genes and, and data on a one by one um, format or perhaps in, in smaller in, in groups um, up to maybe a hundred genes or, or piece of data at a time. However, um, with advanced access you can you could access um, a lot or all of the data in Ensemble um, relatively quickly. So I'm going to cover four main ways. Um, today I'm going to cover four main ways you can access um, all of the data in Ensemble. So firstly I'm going to show you how you can download the full database from the FTP site. I'm also going to show you how you can um, directly query the database, um, the databases that we have um, with MySQL queries. I'm also going to show you programmatic access with the Perl API. Um, and I'm also going to show you how the REST API um, can give you a fast and flexible um, access without having to know um, Perl um, as a programming language. So as I said, we think of um, data access in, in different scales. So um, you can access genes one by one. Um, you can also access groups and find out information about different groups of genes, for example. Or you can access data about the whole genome. And you can do this in a number of ways. So as I said, um, when you use the main browser or the mobile site, this is often the best way to get um, specific information about a particular gene. Um, or, but you can also um, use some of the tools that we've looked at, such as Biomart and VEP, to find information about groups of genes. Um, and the REST API is another way that you can get um, quite a lot of information about um, a relatively large group of genes. We also have the Perl API um, and the querying um, the databases by um, through MySQL. Um, and, and these two methods, um, you can access data um, one by one, um, groups or, or for the whole genome. And then the FTP site um, is important um, for um, downloading data files um, of all of the ensemble data. So our FTP site um, contains files of all of our data, of, of our complete database, sorry. So you um, can have, you can find genomic cDNA um, coding sequences and non-coding RNA and protein sequences um, in FASTA format. You can also find um, annotated sequences um, and gene sets. And you can also find um, variants, for example, and constrained elements and regulatory features. Um, and these are all um, dumped into the FTP site and allows you to download um, them with relative ease. So to access the um, FTP files, you can choose your favorite FTP client, so um, FileZilla, CyberDuck, for example, um, and you can use these to, um, to organize your um, FTP downloads, so you can access um, the files from our FTP downloads page um, through the Ensemble um, web page that I'm going to show you in a moment. Uh, and you can also access the files um, via the FTP site um, that's just linked um, on the right hand side of the page here. So I'm going to um, again leave the presentation for a moment um, and go back into um, the Ensemble browser. And I just want to show you where you can find the FTP um, download. So um, if you look in the blue bar at the top of the page uh, and you click Downloads, you can see all of the ways that you can download um, data from Ensemble. Um, and you can see on the right here, there's a link showing you, um, taking you to download data via FTP. So here, um, this was a screenshot that was in the webinar. You can see um, beneath, um, beneath the blurb at the top, there's um, lots of information organized by species, um, linking you to all of the different files. So you can see here the FASTA files, um, for example, the DNA, cDNA for human, as well as all of the different file types that we have available. Um, and we also have um, cross-species um, FTP files as well. Um, for example, for the comparative genomics. So that was a very quick demonstration. I just wanted to show you um, where in the Ensemble browser you're able to find um, these files.
Um, but just a word of warning, um, the FTP files um, are really big. They can be multiple um, megabytes up to gigabytes, um, in fact, sometimes. Um, and it does take a lot of time to download uh, and unzip the compressed files. So we do advise you um, to really think about whether you need this data um, and to make sure it's the right file before you download because it can take um, a lot of time um, and it can take up a lot of computer memory as well. So the FTP site summary um, is really good for a number of things. Um, you, can, um, you can get all of the data from Ensemble. Um, you can get sequences. Um, and the files are updated from release to release. So um, the file types stay the same, but you can always keep getting the most up-to-date um, data from, um, from the FTP site by um, regularly um, downloading the, the files that you need. Um, and the files are, are easy to download and decompress. It can just take um, many minutes to do um, to download a file at a time. So the next thing I wanted to show you in terms of um, advanced data access um, is accessing data, accessing the Ensemble databases through MySQL queries. So you can um, directly query the database um, using MySQL queries. Um, so MySQL is just a way um, of um, organizing data um, in tables um, in a relational way. So um, this is a, a technique that Ensemble employs. Sorry, this is a technique that Ensemble employs um, to um, organize its data in many tables um, that are connected um, relationally. Um, and you can query these databases um, if you know MySQL um, as a language. So um, this is an example of a MySQL query at the bottom that we're going to um, re revisit in a moment. Um, but I just wanted to um, show you an example of, of a schema that we have um, for um, organizing the data that we have in Ensemble. Um, I definitely don't expect you to even perhaps understand or, or be able to read any of the um, information on this slide, but it's just to really give you an idea um, that we do have a lot of data um, that's stored in MySQL and that it's quite, um, quite complex. So um, to be able to perform um, efficient MySQL queries, um, you really do need to know the schema, um, where all the data is stored in the tables. Um, and although this is, a, this is available, um, I think only a very small number of people in the world probably remember all of the schema from the, um, from the top of their head. So I just wanted to show you, um, although how tricky it could be, um, how quick and easy it also is if you do know how to query um, the MySQL schema. Um, so in this example, I have an ensemble gene ID, um, and I want to get the entree gene ID for this gene. So in order to um, perform this query, we need to refer to the schema, which you can find um, on the um, help and documentation section. So even though a query might seem quite simple um, at, uh, in the first instance, um, it does depend how the, the tables are related um, through primary keys, um, which determines how easy and or how complex the query might actually be. So in our example here, we have um, an ensemble um, stable ID. So you can see here the stable ID um, of a particular gene um, is, um, is given in the gene table. But, we all, but in fact, we actually want um, the entree gene ID, which, is, um, which, is an, um, which, is an, which we take from an external database, um, which is, again, even defined by the XREF table. So what we, in fact, need to do is we need to link um, the stable ID um, through the object XREF table um, and the XREF table um, to directly query the external database. So we do have many layers um, of queries um, and going through many tables, um, even for something that might seem quite um, simple at the, very, um, at the very beginning. So this is our query that's um, going to um, find the entree gene ID um, from our stable um, ensemble ID. So you can see here, um, we first need to access um, the ensemble databases, and we need to define um, the database, the version of the database that we want to access. So 
Um, in our example here, we're accessing an archive site. We're um, an archive database. We're um, querying um, the 82 schema, um, and this is the um, this is the query that we have um, that's going to link all of the different tables um, and retrieve the entree gene ID um, when we've defined our ensemble stable ID. So I just want to show you, I just want to show you how you can run this. So if you have, I'm going to copy and paste this query. So you can open a terminal. And if you paste your query, you can see that here we've accessed, um, you can see here we've accessed the ensemble databases. Um, and then we have, um, we've changed our database. So we've, um, we've defined that we want to use Homo sapiens core um, 82. So we, then, then we've changed our database. Um, and then we've, um, we've query, we've, we've performed our query, um, which is returned um, the entree gene ID um, given our um, ensemble stable ID. So as you can see, um, even though it could be quite complex, um, you can get a lot of data very quickly um, if, you, if you know the schema and if you know how to um, perform a query with MySQL. So as a um, summary, after looking at the MySQL queries, um, it's um, very good in, in querying the whole genome, um, and it can be very um, quick, although there is a, a cost for if you have a very complex query um, in terms of time. Um, and the difficulty can, in, can increase as you um, try and query multiple tables, um, and these queries are not often reusable um, from, from query to query. You have to obviously rewrite um, all of the queries as, as you sort of need them. Um, and the schema can change between releases. Um, so a query that works um, now might not be working at the end of the year because the, the, relational, um, the relation between the tables changes. Um, and the other thing is that you can't get sequences um, using MySQL queries. So the third way that I wanted to show you um, to access um, the ensemble data is through the Perl API. And this is often thought of um, as perhaps the fastest and the most flexible way um, of accessing ensemble data. Um, and you can perform database queries using Perl scripts. Um, and in ensemble, we use object oriented Perl. So I'm not going to show you. Um, how to code in Perl. I'm sure many of you might not even know how to use Perl, but I think it is really important to understand um, that that's how um, many people do access data, um, and perhaps um, it's also important when um, using the, um, the VEP, for example, you can run Perl scripts without even having to write them. So um, a basic understanding of Perl is, is actually quite important, I think, here. So you can learn Perl um, by going to perhaps courses or reading um, help and documentation and, um, and textbooks, for example. Uh, and then you can download um, the API modules um, from the Ensemble um, website. You can download more modules and customize um, the setup that you have. And then if you learn the Ensemble API, um, and you can begin writing scripts. Uh, and with the Perl API, you can get um, all the possible data out of Ensemble that you could think of, and you can output it in any format that you like. Um, this is just a, a quick um, note to say that you can also um, use the virtual machine. So you can install and run the virtual machine, um, which means that you don't have to install the Perl um, API modules um, to your device. So there are many ways that you can learn um, to use the API. We have um, online training um, through the EBI pages. Um, and we also have API documentation that I'm going to show you um, in a short moment. And this contains a lots of information about all the different queries and common queries that you might want to um, perform um, and gives you some basic scripts that you can run. 
So here, um, I just have a short example. I'm not going to run the script, but I'm going to show you an example of a script um, that we might um, write to, to query um, Ensemble using Perl API. And I, so I, have a, I want to write a script that gets a gene name from the command line um, and then prints its sequence. So um, in this situation, we've already learned how to use the API, um, and we know our way around the documentation. So now we need to write a script. So although this might seem um, like a different language to many of you, um, and it might not be really comprehensible, um, it's quite simple if you just take it sort of one line at a time. So you can see here, um, you just you need to load the Ensemble API registry, um, and this is something that you can um, that there is lots of obviously documentation about these sorts of um, loading the API registry in the help and documentation section. You can then um, get the gene name from the command line, and then you need to get the gene adapter. So um, this is a, um, a command that we have documented um, in the um, help and documentation section um, that you'll be able to find. So if you're interested in finding the gene adapter and incorporating it into your car script, you can look on the help and documentation and find um, the gene adapter. And then you need to get the genes um, using the gene adapter. Um, and you can move through them one by one, um, printing the gene name, um, ID, and sequence. Obviously, there's, obvious, there's lots of syntax and um, important rules to think about when writing Perl script um, that I can't, uh, I'm not going to be able to explain here. Um, but there is lots of um, help and documentation um, available um, on the Ensemble website. So as I said, Perl API is one of the most um, flexible ways of accessing um, all of the um, data within Ensemble. Um, but it does require an understanding of the features of Ensemble. Um, it's very quick, um, uh, but you do need scripts. Um, but these can be easily reused and adapted um, for, for different queries. Um, the API also takes database changes into account, so the scripts don't need to change between releases. So um, that's something that's really good. If you have a script that works very well, um, then you can keep that and, and reuse it many times um, over, over the course of uh, a long period of time. And I, um, maybe quite importantly, you can get sequences using the Perl API. So for those people who um, don't know Perl, uh, and I'm sure that's um, probably very many of you, um, although Perl is very useful um, in terms of storing and working with biological um, data, um, not everybody does work in Perl. So we have a RESTful um, service that allows people who um, perhaps prefer writing in other languages to access the data. Um, and you can do this um, and find out more information about this by visiting um, rest.ensemble.org for, for installation uh, and documentation and examples. Uh, and this is what we're going to do as well. So what is REST? Um, REST allows you to query the database using simple URLs. Um, giving output in plain text format. So um, you can basically um, construct a URL um, that contains the information that you um, that you have um, and defines the, the the data that you want to to display. Um, so here you can see, and um, this is a simple URL um, that's defining um, that we want to um, get the X refs um, for gene BRCA2. So you can see, and then if you paste this into a browser um, and, and go to the page, you can see that then you will get the information um, directly displayed on your screen. And this does mean that you can write scripts in any language to construct these URLs um, and read their output. So the first um, thing to do um, is to think about single endpoints. So um, Rather than querying many different genes all in one go, um, you can use the REST. Um, you can use REST single endpoints um, to um, to get information about um, different um, features that you that you have. So I want to get a gene sequence um, when I have the ensemble gene ID. Um, and the first thing to do is to go to the the documentation. 
Um, and we're going to be able to um, and we're going to be able to um, construct our URL. So I'm going to copy and paste the URL now, but I'm going to show you how um, you would do this. So at the moment we're in um, the Ensemble homepage, but for the, the rest um, help and documentation and information, you can access rest.ensemble.org. And this will take you to um, uh, an information page um, that has um, links to all of the different um, single um, REST single endpoints that we have. So you can see here um, they're divided by, um, um, by topic. And if you scroll further down the page, you can see that um, you can find information about sequences. And there's a short description of each of the REST endpoints. Um, that will allow you to decide whether this is the correct endpoint for you. So here you can see um, we want to request multiple types of sequences um, by stable identifier. So if we click on get sequence ID, we have lots of information um, about the required format of our URL, um, but also optional um, additions that you can put to the URL um, that format the, the output data in a particular way. So for example, with the sequence, um, you can choose to, to mask the data, which, um, um, which masks repeat regions um, as um, ends. Uh, and further down the page, um, there are example requests. So you can see here, for example, um, this is the URL um, with an example gene ID. Uh, and, in this and, and in this example, we have um, a plain text format of data. You can also choose the different formats that you like. Um, for example, fast A is further down. Um, you can see here. So if we open up um, another tab in our browser um, and paste our URL, so you can see here um, we've used the um, example um, to construct our URL and we've added um, our gene ID of interest. And when we go um, our sequence of interest is displayed um, with the header um, and the sequence below. And obviously you can copy and paste this um, for your downstream applications as you see fit. So, as I said, um, the single endpoints are one way to, to work with the REST API. But you can also write scripts in any language that will construct the URLs um, and query them for you. So um, I just want to run through a quick um, example um, where we have a script where we want to write a script that gets a gene name from the command line um, and prints its sequence. So this is something um, similar to what we did before. But there are no, there is no one REST endpoint that does this action. So you can actually combine even two endpoints with a script. So in this example, um, we're going to write a script in Python um, that is designed to um, construct the URL um, and get the information from, from the first URL, put that information into the, the second URL and, and query that one as well. So as you can see here, um, the, first, um, the first job is to um, get the gene name from the command line um, and define the general URL parameters. We, can, we then need to define the rest, the rest query based on um, our knowledge um, of, the, of the endpoint URL. And then we can submit the query. The query um, is outputted in JSON format, which we need to decode. Um, and then move through these genes one by one um, to, then, um, to, to define our second query, which we can submit um, and decode. So although, again, um, I'm, it doesn't really teach you how to um, script and, and, and run any of these um, queries, it does show you some of the exa an example of some of the ways that you can use um, the, the REST API um, to perform some quite complex queries and get a lot of data all in one go.
So the last thing that I wanted to show you um, before we finished um, is how you can perform um, uh, post. So some of our REST endpoints um, can perform multiple queries all in one go using post. Um, and I often like to use Postman, which is a, an on, a free online tool um, that allows you to perform post queries um, using your um, REST endpoints. So I'm going to show you how to use this in a moment. Um, but you can see here it's quite a simple interface um, for the tool that, that you can download from the internet. Um, and if you, you can just choose um, that you want to perform a post query um, and input your uh, REST endpoint. You can then um, form the body of the URL um, by pasting, for example, a list of IDs. And so uh, there's not really um, a limit to the number of IDs that you can paste in here. So this is, a, um, this is data access on, on a really large scale. And then you can define the header um, and, and how you want the data to be returned to you. So I'm going to show you how you can do this. This is Postman that I've um, downloaded and, and installed on my device. So you can see here um, I've defined um, the post query um, and I've pasted the, the REST endpoint that I've um, taken from the Ensemble homepage, um, from the Ensemble Health and Documentation section. And I've pasted in the list um, of ensemble stable IDs into the body um, of the query. Um, and I've, um, I've defined the, the format of the data um, that I want to be returned to me. So when I press send, I'll then have returned to me um, all of the sequences um, as defined by the REST endpoint. Um, for the, the stable IDs that I entered in, in the body of the URL. So this is a very um, quick way um, to perform um, to perform large scale data access without really having to know um, any computer programming languages at all. So this is um, a summary of the REST um, API. So it does, again, require you to understand the features that we have in Ensemble, um, and perhaps using some programming language um, that you already know. Um, and with the programming, you can query the whole database. Um, and it's a, very, it's, a, it's a very fast way to do this, although obviously um, the more data that you want to retrieve um, means that the query takes a longer time to complete. Um, and again, you can get sequences um, and you can reuse the queries um, from um, release to release um, as the um, API takes the database changes into account. So that actually brings me to um, the end of the um, advanced access webinar. Um, while I um, finish up, I just wanted to bring your attention to um, a number of points. Um, firstly, is that um, we will be sending out um, a SurveyMonkey feedback um, survey. Um, for not just this webinar, but all of the, the series as a whole um, by email that you used when you signed up. Um, we would really appreciate it if you filled out this survey to tell us whether you've enjoyed um, all of the webinars um, or perhaps any in particular, and whether, they, um, whether you felt that you've benefited um, from them. Um, this is also um, a point to say that you can host an Ensemble course. So, um, if you take all of the different webinars that we've um, that we've given over the last six or seven weeks, um, that basically um, forms uh, a one to two day um, browser webinar that we um, are very happy to come and teach um, at your institute. So if you're interested in that, you can um, find out more information about hosting an ensemble course um, um, through our blog, for example, um, at um, ensemble.info. Um, and there's lots of ways that you can find help and documentation. So um, you can email us um, at the help desk, so helpdesk.ensemble.org, 
Um, we know that some of you have already been contacting us via the help desk, and it's a really good way um, to get personal responses for any problems that you have about using Ensemble. Um, and all of the webinars are actually going to be uploaded to YouTube, so YouTube is another really good place um, to find um, demonstrations um, and presentations about Ensemble um, and on the Ensemble data. Um, we do have, obviously, our publications. Um, we have our Ensemble 2016 publication is our latest, um, is our latest release. And it, um, if you do use Ensemble in your work, um, then we really do appreciate you um, citing us um, um, from your work, um, as it allows us to, to see how widely appreciated Ensemble is in the community. And if you'd like to follow us, and you can uh, follow us on our Facebook um, pages, um, via Twitter, um, and also I mentioned that the blog you can follow at www.ensemble.info um, for lots of information about releases um, and, for example, maintenance announcements. So that brings me to the end of the webinar. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge all of the people that um, put a lot of hard work and effort into um, creating and maintaining Ensemble as a resource that's free for everyone, and obviously all of our funders um, who allow Ensemble to remain free uh, and open access to everyone um, for, um, and for all their hard work. So that brings me to the end of the webinar.